Yes guys, continuing from where we left off in the previous problem, we have got a terminal capital employed as 19, 9.8 and 9.6 and with the NRR, normal profits are 1.9, 10%, 1.9, 0.98 and 0.96. My FMPs we already calculated as 2.8, 3.08 and 1.16. Comparing both, I get super profits, 2.8 minus 1.9, 0.9, 3 0 0.08 minus 0.98, 2.1. 1.16 minus 0.96 is 0.2. Goodwill is given as 4 years purchase of super profits. So 4 years is 3.6, 8.4 and 0.8. So that will give us the answer of question number 8. Go to question number 9. Question number 9. The following particulars are the of two companies ascertain what is the value of goodwill. If assets are revalued and the goodwill is 4 years purchase of average super profits of the last 3 years, such average is to be calculated after adjusting depreciation at the rate of 10% on increase or decrease in revaluation of fixed asset. Income, income tax is to be ignored. Normal profit on capital employed is 10%, capital employed being considered on the basis of net revalued amounts of tangible assets. A similar problem to what we have just solved. So, speed metrics. Yes guys, Ram and Sam, two companies, start with your average annual profits, before debenture interest. Deduction for debenture interest. Debenture interest in the balance sheet there are ten percent debentures of four lakhs zero point four and nil. Depreciation on revaluation <coughs> tangible block in RAM is sixteen. Revalued figure is 20 additional 4 lakhs depreciation is 0 0.4 extra depreciation. SAM 12 became 10 downward revaluation add depreciation of 0.2. This will be 2.8 and 2.68. 3.08 we are adding in. So this is your FMP figure, get your capital employed, terminal capital employed, maintain those two columns, Ram and Sam, fill up the figures. Revalued figures, so start with your assets. Tangible block 20 and 10, current assets 7 and 2.8, 27 and 12.8 is your total assets, reduce your outside liabilities from this, creditors 1 outside liability, 4 and 3, debentures, 10% debentures are 4 and nil. Remaining is reserves and equity share capital, that's it, outside liabilities are 8 and 3. So my capital employed, closing capital employed 
is 19 and 9.8. You can't calculate average because you don't have current year profits again. So calculate goodwill on the basis of super profits. Four years purchase of super profits is what we need now. Take the FMP figures 2.8 and 3.08. NRR is given to you as 10%. Normal profits is 10% of capital employed. NRR into capital employed. NRR is given to you as 10% in the question. Apply. 1.9 and 0.98 I get my super profits 0.9 and 2.1 and finally the value of goodwill is 4 years purchase of super profits multiplied by 4 3.6 and 8.4 the same question what we have just solved but only two companies given to us. These are simple questions guys. Go for the 13th one. Question number 10. The following is the balance sheet of two companies A and B. This is slightly diff you know, different type of question guys. There is a unique adjustment which we get now. Revaluation both for tangible and current assets given to us and average annual profits of 3 years before charging debenture interest. Similar way how we have started the pre previous two problems is starting the same way. Goodwill is 4 years purchase of average super profits and average to be calculated after adjusting depreciation of 10% on the amount of increase or decrease in the fixed assets. Same thing we have already seen. But now comes an additional adjustment. In case of B limited, a claim of 10,000 was omitted and it is to be adjusted against the average profits. Income tax to be ignored. So this is the new adjustment which is coming up. A 10,000 rupees of a claim which was omitted from B limited. Normal profits are on capital employed is 15% and capital employed to be considered on the basis of revalued amount of tangible assets. Ascertain the goodwill figure of A and B. So... NRR already given to you, so only two determinants is what we have to calculate. One is your capital employed, other one is your FMP. Or start with your FMP, then you can go for your capital employed. Goodwill is super profits multiplied by 4. Put on heading computation of FMP. Two companies, so two columns, A and B. Balance sheet also given normally, so take the full figures. Start with average annual profits. Before debenture interest. Pick up the values of A and B and place them. A's column 4 lakhs 50,000. B's column 3 lakhs 10,000. First adjustment should be for the debenture interest which was not deducted. In calculating such average debenture interest, 10% debentures of 6 lakhs and 4 lakhs. So debenture interest is 60,000 and 40,000. Ignoring taxation, 60,000 and 40,000.
depreciation on revaluation of tangible assets. Depreciation on revaluation. A, A's fixed assets are 17 lakhs. Revalued to 21 lakhs. So increase in the value of an asset is 4 lakhs. Depreciation at the rate of 10%. Extra depreciation of 40,000 to be charged. B. B's fixed assets are 14. But he has given your revalued figure as 12. So reduced by 2 lakhs. Add back depreciation of 20,000. One last adjustment there is regarding the claim. So whenever there is a claim. There is a reduction as far as the profits are concerned. He clearly said it is to be adjusted against the average profits. So it should reduce the average profits by 10,000. This will give us our FMP. FMP is 3,50,000 and 3 lakhs, no, 2,80,000. Lakh the second determinant is capital employed. You can't calculate average. Again, you need to be based on your closing capital employed only. Continue the column. Assets. Two assets. Tangible assets and current assets. Place the figures. 21 lakhs, 12 lakhs, 10 lakhs and 4 lakhs. 21 lakhs. 12 lakhs. Current assets 10 lakhs and 4 lakhs. Check the balance sheet if you have left out any other asset. That's it. Goodwill can't be considered for the purpose of valuing goodwill itself. Oh, this is 31 lakhs, 16 lakhs. What about the next one? Outside liabilities. Let's start deducting them. The first outside liability, I'm going in the reverse order for your liability side. The first one which I see there is your creditors. Three lakhs and five lakhs. Debentures. Six lakhs and four lakhs. That's it on the liability side, but we have one additional liability that should come into picture now because we have provided the claim. Such a claim made provided should also be appearing on the liability side. He has omitted to provide such claim. So now you provide such claim. Claims. 10,000 rupees on the liability side. That is an important adjustment guys for claim. Total of liability is 9 lakhs and 9 lakh 10. And there gets your closing capital employed. As 22 lakhs. And. 4 lakhs 90 or 6 lakhs 90 you know capital employed you know FMP NRR is given in the question as 15% comparing these three figures we can identify the value of goodwill valuation of goodwill by super profits method
start with your FMP. Three lakh fifty and two lakh eighty. Compare it with normal profits. Ten percent of capital employed. Ten percent of capital employed. Twenty two lakhs. Two lakhs twenty thousand and sixty nine thousand. Oh, I'm sorry. It's fifteen percent. Normal profits at the rate of fifteen percent. So this is three lakhs thirty thousand. One lakh three thousand five hundred. From this we get super profit. Twenty thousand and one lakh seventy six thousand five hundred. Goodwill is how many years purchase? Four years purchase of profits. Eighty thousand. How much is this? Seven lakh six thousand. That is the value of goodwill. Read question number. Eleven. The balance sheet of Steel Limited as on 31st March 2011 is given to you. There are some call scenarios on the liability on the on the liability side as a deduction from share capital that becomes an adjustment year. On 1/4/2008, a new furniture costing 20,000 was purchased and wrongly charged to revenue. Wrongly charged to revenue in the sense he put it to P&L account, treating it as an expenditure. But it is a furniture, so it should be treated as a fixed asset. No rectification has been made for the same, and it was shown in 2008, guys. Current year is 2011, I guess. Yeah, 2011. So three years before. Fixed assets are worth 15% above their book value. Stock is overvalued by 50,000, and 10% of the debtors are doubtful. Of the investment, 10% are trade investments, and the balance are non-trade. And the trade investments are also valued 10% below cost. A uniform rate of 10% is earned on all investments. Profits after tax of 2008, 9, 9, 10, and 10, 11 are already given to you as 250, 3, 280, and 3 lakh 30. In a similar business, the NRR on capital employed is 20%. Calculate goodwill on the basis of two years purchase of a last three years average, assuming a tax rate of fifty percent. So, guys, if you read through the question, basically you need to understand there are a lot of adjustments in it. One adjustment is regarding the furniture. If you rectify the furniture on two thousand eight, you need to provide depreciation impact on that as well, because earlier when it was charged to P and L, there was no furniture recognized. So in the subsequent year, he never charged depreciation. Now when you are bringing in the furniture into the books of accounts, we need to charge depreciation for eight, nine, nine, ten, and ten, eleven. So this is the first thing that you need to remember. Subsequently, think about the value of stock. Stock and debtors on the balance sheet date. Uh, stock is overvalued by fifty thousand. Stock is to be overvalued. You increase. Stock is overvalued. That means it is already overvalued. You need to reduce by fifty thousand. And 10% of the debtors are doubtful. Bad debts you have to provide. So these are some adjustments that we have to do. Again, I'll split the adjustment into two parts. One is a current year prof, corrected profits, and for the future maintainable profits. So let's start. Put on a heading: computation of FMP again.
first corrected prophets. How many years? Three years prophets? Eight, nine. Nine, ten. Current year, ten, eleven. Let's start with the profits given. Two lakh fifty, two lakh eighty, and three lakh thirty. Two fifty, two eighty, three thirty. These profits given to you are clearly mentioned as after tax. So, whenever I have to give the adjustments, let's take before tax profits. PBT. What was the tax deducted check? Assuming that the tax rate is 50%. So, if 100 rupees is the profit, 50 rupees tax, balance profit after taxes, balance 50. So, if I want to write PBT, I'll just write double of these figures. into 100 by 50. Once you have the figure of PBT, what do we do? We need to start giving adjustments for corrected current year profits. What are the corrections in the current year profits? Just read. We will try to classify the adjustments into correction for current year profits and FMP. First one, furniture. Furniture is a correction to the profits in the current year. So we have to give the first adjustment for the corrected current year profits. Stock and debtors, these two are also corrections for current year profits. Then, of the investment, 10% of trade investments, the balance are non-trade, they are yielding a dividend of 10%, that is an adjustment for FMP. So, that is the only adjustment in FMP, I guess. The remaining adjustments, you can do it here. So, let's start. Furniture, under this, first it was wrongly charged to PNL. It was wrongly charged to revenue, which year? 2008, cost is 20,000. In 2008-9, add back 20,000. Then we need to charge depreciation on such furniture. Check. Furniture shall be charged depreciation at the rate of 10% on reducing balance. Okay. On 1-4. If you observe the date, 1-4-0-8. That means depreciation full year for event 2008-9. 10% is 2000. To get WDV basis of depreciation, you just have to deduct 10% from the previous depreciation. That's it. 2000 minus 10, minus 10%, 200, 1800. 1800 minus 10%, 180, 1620. Easier way of calculating your depreciation as per WDV. One adjustment over. Second one. Fixed assets are worth 50,000, sorry, stock is overvalued by 50,000 and 10% of the debtors are doubtful. Stock valuation only for the current year, overvalued by 50, let me reduce it by 50 now. If I reduce the stock, obviously profit reduces, provision for doubtful debts. Provision for doubtful debts, how much debtors is? 4 lakhs. Doubtful is 10%. 40,000. Guys, depreciation also negative figures. Reduction in profits. That's it. From this information, we can try to calculate.
corrected profits. Five lakh eighteen thousand first year. Five lakh fifty eight two hundred second year. And the final year it will be five lakhs sixty two thousand no sixty eight thousand three eighty. These are the corrected profits. Once you take an average, we get average profits. Then I have two adjustments. One is regarding the return on non-trade investment. Second one is the depreciation on revaluation. Since furniture is being revalued, the the depreciation percentage which is given, I can take that. So what average can I take here? I have to take weighted average. If you observe exactly, there is an increasing trend. So you need to observe weights here. Weights of one, two, and three. Weight into profit. Earliest year least weight. Eight nine. I'm giving the lowest weight. So my average corrected profits five lakh eighteen, eleven lakh sixteen four hundred, seventeen lakh five thousand two forty divided by sum of weight six. Average profits is five lakh fifty six thousand five ninety. Fixed assets are worth fifteen percent more. Guys, depreciation I know only for furniture. Now here again you have to take an assumption. Guys, all the fixed assets are fifteen percent more is what he said. If I'm talking about that, all fixed assets are fifteen percent more. In the balance sheet, I have a machinery, I have a freehold property. Okay, anyways, freehold property is not depreciable, but machinery, vehicle, and furniture. I have three fixed assets. Out of three fixed assets, I do not have the depreciation percentages of those two. I do not have for machinery, and neither I have for vehicles. All I have is only for the furniture, which is already given to you as 10% on reducing balance method. So whenever there is an upward revaluation on all the fixed assets, there should be an increase in the depreciation for all the assets. So here also, when I take depreciation, actually I need to take even for furniture as well, since the information is given only with respect to furniture. If I was given information regarding machinery and vehicle, I would have considered even that. On the contrary, you can make an assumption saying that since the depreciation percentages are not given for all the fixed assets, I will not calculate my depreciation on revaluation impact at all. But since the value is given, let's try to use the value and let's try to get that. Adjustments for FMP. Trade investment, check non-trade investments, and get the return. Ten percent of the investments are trade. 
So the balance 90% are non-trained and they are yielding a uniform rate of 10%. So my total investment is 2 lakhs. 90% into 2 lakhs non-trade investments into 10% rate of interest. So this will give you 18,000 I guess. So average profits reduce at 18,000 return on non-trade investment and also reduce your depreciation on revaluation of furniture. Future impact guys does not impact the current year. If the revaluation is done at the end of the year then it should impact the, prop, uh, the depreciation of subsequent years. What is the furniture already existing in the balance sheet? 50,000. My depreciation is 10% on already existing value of 50,000 plus additional furniture. 20,000 furniture after 3 years of depreciation. Now what I will be left out is 16,200 minus 1620. I think we will be left out with 14,580. Check. How much is it revalued by? A increase in the valuation is 15% multiplied by 15%. So the book value increased by 15%, 10% depreciation on that. I have added that 14,580 because even that is a furniture which is omitted. Now I bought it into the books of accounts. So a total value will come 64,580. 15% upward revaluation, 10% depreciation impact. So I have to reduce by the additional depreciation amount is. Nine and you get FMP. This is pre-tax FMP. Because if you observe, till now I started with PBT only. So I have solved the entire problem with before tax. After all the adjustments are given, one time I will deduct tax. Now what you get is also pre-tax. It should be 5 lakhs. 36,006 Guys be quick in calculations at least I am not considering depreciation on other fixed assets of machinery and vehicle guys because the depreciation percentage is not given. I am given only regarding furniture. I am considering only this. You can write down that statement below. Depreciation on revaluation of machinery and vehicles. is not considered in absence of percentage of depreciation.
So I don't have this figure, so I'm not considering the depreciation on revaluations. Go for the capital employed guys. We have already got FMP. Once again guys, FMP pre-tax. Can I get FMP post-tax? Can I calculate JJKL? Yeah, FMP post-tax. Calculate. How much is tax rate? 50% strike 50% out of it so you get 2 lakhs 68,000 810 rounding it off yeah rounding it off rounding it off to 810 Check capital employed now. First we'll start with closing capital employed. Then I'll get average. Start with your assets. One by one. The first asset that I need to consider is machinery. Upward revalued by 15%. So 3 lakhs will become 3 lakhs 45,000. 15% upward revaluation on machinery was suggested there in point number 2. Then comes your furniture. Already existing in the balance sheet. I'm sorry, first uh, we have freehold property before. Let's go in the same order. Freehold property. 4,50,000 then I have vehicle oh one second guys 15% add 4,50 plus 15% is 67,500 5,17,500 vehicles add 15% 1,15,000 last furniture Book value already existing was 50,000. Newly increased furniture is 14,580 plus 15%. 74267 then come to the investments we consider only trade investments non trade investments not to be considered in the valuation of capital employed out of the investment 10% is trade investments what is the total investment 2 lakhs if 10% is trade 20,000 and he's saying below that the trade investments are valued 10% below cost. 20,000 minus 10% is 2,000. Balance is 18,000. Investment is only 18. 18 plus 18 is 1,500. We have adjusted stock. Stock is reduced by 50,000. So stock closing is only 2 lakhs. Debtors. We have written off 10%. Closing data is 3,60,000. Bank. 2 lakhs. Bank 60,000, I'm sorry. Yeah. That will give you total assets. 
when compare it with outside liabilities how many outside liabilities do we have two creditors and bank loan three lakh creditor bank loan 2 lakhs there is total 5 lakhs asset side you need to total Sixteen lakhs ninety-one thousand seven sixty-seven. Now here comes the adjustment check. In the equity share capital, just below equity share capital, he has also written calls in areas rupees two on the final call. Guys, that means how many shares did not pay the call? Ten thousand shares. That means the balance shares paid the call. So basically guys, when the call is already made, your calls in areas becomes an asset. Though, we show it as a reduction from share capital in the, in the balance sheet. But actually when you call it, it is an amount receivable from the equity shareholder. If it is uncalled, then I don't have an adjustment. If let's say it is a 10 rupee share, 6 rupees paid up, remaining 4 rupees did not call up. Then I don't have any adjustment. But once I call, it becomes a receivable for the company. And such receivable, once it is not paid, then you observe it as call scenarios. It is nothing but a similar to your asset again. So you need to add call scenarios here. Guys, you will not add if the call is not made. If the call was not made, then do not add. Sixteen lakh eighteen nine thousand seven sixty. Yes, guys. So, what is your capital employee? My closing capital employed A minus B plus C. Deduct for five lakhs and add twenty thousand. So you get twelve lakh nine thousand seven sixty seven. This closing less half of current year's profit after tax. Where is current year profit after tax? Where do you find this current year profits? Corrected profits of current year 2010-11 is 5,68,380. One second guys, what is that profit? That profit is not after tax. We have added back tax and we have profits before tax. So when you have before tax and this 5,68,380 is profit before tax of the current year. So we need to give a tax adjustment. Bring this to profit after tax and then deduct half of it. What is the tax percentage given? Tax is 50%. So if this is profit after tax, then half of this is profit after tax. If this is PBT, then PAT is half of this. Half of PAT is nothing but one fourth of PBT. So I can simply write this like this. half of one by two into five lakh sixty eight thousand three eighty. It is nothing but one by one by four. Simply you can call it as one by four guys. One by four one four two. 
zero nine five. And finally, we arrive at average capital employed. That is ten lakhs. Sixty seven thousand six seventy two. One zero six seven six seven two. NRR is given to you. Check the percentage given then. NRR is twenty percent. NRR is given to you as twenty percent. You can start calculating goodwill. Goodwill is two years purchase. Goodwill by super profits method. You know FMP, you know capital employed, you know NRR. You can start calculating. FMP is two lakh sixty-eight thousand eight ten. Normal profits are twenty percent NRR on ten lakh Two lakh thirteen thousand five thirty four. This will give you your super profit. Super profits is fifty five thousand two seventy six. Compare your FMP and normal profits. We get super profit. Goodwill is double of this. Goodwill is just a multiplication of this into two, one ten, five fifty two. 